We're still waiting on that press briefing uh, between uh, the German and Ukrainian leaders to get underway. It looks as though something is just about to uh, happen. It is indeed. Let's go live to, uh, to Kiev and listen in to uh, President uh, Zelensky, who's uh, hosting his uh, German counterpart, Chancellor, Chancellor Scholz. Thank you, uh, Chancellor. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen and um, uh, journalists and guests. Mr. Scholz, I am pleased to see you in Kiev today on this first visit to Ukraine. Germany is an important partner of Ukraine, supporting our Euro, inter Euro integrational ambitions and an important partner with whom we are minded to deepen cooperation in every uh, sphere. Today, uh, we're continuing our conversation uh, with the Chancellor uh, since our meeting in Brussels. Uh, and uh, the main challenges uh, of security uh, facing us today. Today, uh, the future of European architecture is being decided in Ukraine. Uh, we are part of that architecture, and we discuss the key approaches to this important process, the importance of uh, uh, legal guarantees that are capable of protecting Ukraine in, in, and its, the Ukrainian state. The escalation on the Ukrainian border is an unprecedented challenge to Europe and the world. And therefore, our partner's position and the concrete steps to support Ukraine and support its resilience and its defense capability is a win for the entire region and the European Union. I repeat it again that Ukraine is a reliable partner and a true uh, outpost of democracy in the region. And without Ukraine, security in Europe is impossible. Therefore, today, when we're facing unprecedented challenges, it is important to strengthen support for Ukraine on the part of our partners. Support in terms of security, econom economic support and energy support. And this is what we uh, discussed with Mr. Scholz today. The Chancellor reiterated full support for Ukraine's territorial integrity and sovereignty within the internationally recognized borders and an intention to work uh, with Ukraine on the Crimea platform um, uh, to end the occupation of Crimea. And uh, we also discussed the latest steps towards a peaceful settlement. In this short space of time, we uh, managed to uh, have two meetings of the uh, political advisors in Paris and Berlin in the Normandy format, and I want to stress uh, uh, my gratitude to Mr. Chancellor and to Germany. We share a common view towards a peaceful settlement, and I hope that soon we will be able to have more negotiations and have um, a quad quadrilateral meeting of the leaders. Tomorrow, Mr. Scholz will represent the German position and the common position of the entire transatlantic community uh, to whom the territorial sovereignty and integrity of Ukraine is important, represent these views in Moscow. And uh, it is important that the head of the German government uh, uh, held talks in Kiev first. We uh, value their solid that this show of solidarity. Ukraine's security is the security of Europe. And I hope that we will together find a way to protect our common home. We discussed the introduction of a, a, a package of sanctions against aggression. My position is clear, and uh, I think the most effective approach uh, is preventive signals. For Ukraine, it is important to buy weapons and um, arms uh, against aggression and uh, defensive supplies. And I raise this question as well. Germany is one of our priority trade partners in Europe, and we agreed that in the strategic perspective, one of the key elements of Ukraine's resilience and stability in the region will be German investments into Ukraine. And we are interested in uh, uh, mutually interested in this. 
So we have not yet uh, finished this conversation. We will continue talking about it. And I proposed uh, holding the fifth uh, Ukrainian-German Economic Forum in Kiev. And we have many areas of cooperation um, open to us. That, therefore, it is important for us to organize uh, inter intergovernmental consultations um, between our two countries uh, under our joint leadership. We hope that this will open a new way of uh, the mutual relationship. We also di discussed in detail Nord Stream 2 and the security challenges it poses. We have some differences in our assessment here. I reiterated our position is that we view Nord Stream 2 exclusively through the prism of energy and security threats to us and to the region. We are clear uh, in that this is a geopolitical weapon, therefore Ukraine needs energy guarantees and security guarantees. I suggested that we open a strategic dialogue in the energy sphere in which we will develop energy guarantees uh, for both of our states in the energy sphere. It is important that Germany guarantees the continuing transit of gas through Ukraine. The Chancellor uh, confirmed uh, Germany's um, intention to give specifics to uh, the intention of working on renewable sources and uh, of energy. Uh, Ukraine is uh, uh, ready to offer great prospects for de the development of green energy. It is important to us that our partners are firm and will continue to be firm as to the open door policy of NATO. Uh, we are counting on their support for our full membership of NATO. This step would be a powerful signal in support of Ukraine's geopolitical choice, uh, which is enshrined in our legislation and has been recognized by many countries in the world. Thank you. Statement by the Federal Chancellor of Germany, Olaf Scholz. Many thanks. Thank, thank you for the warm welcome, uh, dear uh, Vladimir Zelensky. Um, we have uh, had now conversation, a dialogue for about two hours. It was very good. It's not the first conversation that we had. We already had the opportunity in Brussels to have intensive uh, talks with each other, but it's very good that we were able to do it here in this location. And I'm very happy that I can uh, come. I was able to come to Kiev for the first time as Chancellor. It's very serious um, times that I am uh, visiting the Ukraine. One uh, message is very important. Um, uh, Germany is standing next to uh, with Ukraine. Um, our country is really impressed by the uh, democratic um, uh, road that um, you, the Ukraine is taking. We are really impressed by that. Uh, it is a great um, um, uh, issue that um, uh, it, it, was, it was a very brave thing that the uh, women and men in this country have uh, fought for. Uh, Germany supports the Ukraine uh, in uh, many um, ways. Uh, there is no other country that has um, uh, supported financially uh, the Ukraine as much as uh, Germany. More than two billion uh, dollars um, have helped the Ukrainian economy to become more resistant against the um, against foreign influence and to um, help them onto their own feet. I can assure you that um, uh, we are going to continue with this, um, and uh, this is uh, uh, why I can um, uh, announce uh, that um, uh, 150 million credit, uh, a provision of 150 um, credit to you uh, on an ex expedited uh, pr process, and another 150 million released later, and uh, is going to be a further 1.2 billion euros, and one third of that actually comes from Germany. Uh, between our countries are very uh, strong economic ties, and uh, I'm, uh, um, uh, I would like to emphasize that we are going to continue with this. Uh, also, in that that uh, German uh, companies are encouraged to uh, further um, invest in uh, the Ukraine. Um, we have uh, um, trained um, uh, Ukrainian officers. We have uh, treated um, those who got wounded, and in the last few weeks, we had. Uh, a very important, we have made a very important contribution that we have uh, provided a field 
hospital that we have um, um, handed over and mainly we are um, the most important thing is to find a diplomatic solution it is very different uh, difficult situation together with France we have been uh, intensified our uh, negotiations through the Normandy format it's a very important uh, process of dialogues uh, it's very important that um, the um, um, advisors are uh, meeting here and that is carried on in Berlin as well it's a very difficult process it, uh, it remains a very difficult process but uh, I want to emphasize that it is worth it uh, President Zelensky and myself we agreed that the Normandy format um, together with the uh, conversations between Russia and USA um, and um, the OSCE uh, it is a very important format for the conversations with Russia uh, the president uh, also uh, reassured me in our conversations that um, uh, they are going to uh, um, provide uh, um, efforts in the Minsk format as well uh, for the change of the uh, uh, constitution and the um, election processes. Um, and talking about the Russian-Ukrainian um, uh, border, uh, this is, we cannot understand. Uh, there are no reasonable uh, grounds why this uh, military deployment would be made there uh, and um, how to uh, handle the um, um, uh, security demands from uh, Russia and these were the main uh, topic of our conversations and uh, here I would like to emphasize again that the sovereignty and territorial um, um, uh, security is not uh, uh, we are not going to um, uh, uh, leave this I mean, this is going to be always very important for us and to try to de-escalate the tension in the region um, the further um, any further military aggression would have very serious economic and geostrategic um, uh, consequences and this is what uh, I'm going to emphasize tomorrow in Moscow I would like to thank uh, the Ukrainian government um, that they are so um, um, uh, they're holding back in such a situation in such a threatening situation that um, they have been uh, seeing now for quite some time and I would like uh, to um, encourage uh, the government here to continue with this careful uh, policy um, we are working very hard on every level, uh, very close uh, with our partners and allies in the U European Union, in the NATO. Uh, it is very important, um, uh, the direct conversations uh, that um, we are undertaking, and these are the main reasons why I undertook this journey. Uh, uh, we, uh, the European security is the most important uh, point. Um, um, there are very, uh, um, there, are, there have been um, suggestions from um, our um, uh, partners, and we are waiting for our response to that. Um, with the OSCE, uh, this is a platform where all uh, countries who are concerned uh, find a platform where they can uh, talk to each other on an, on an equal footing. It is very important that we are doing this in the uh, cooperation with Europe and we also uh, encourage Russia to use these um, offers of discussions. Uh, perhaps uh, um, at the end uh, to emphasize again in case of a military escalation we are um, we have um, uh, agreed with our allies and we are ready to undertake and implement uh, very serious sanctions the territorial integrity of the Ukraine uh, should not be um, violated and if that happens then we know what to do um, journalists may ask a few questions. Ukraine 24. Hello, this is Ukraine 24. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to put my first questions to you. What is your opinion concerning today's statement by the Ukrainian ambassador to the UK that Ukraine may consider as a concession um, uh, giving up its NATO membership. We know this statement by the foreign minister that this was uh, the wrong interpretation, that the ambassador meant something else. What is your opinion? And a question to the Chancellor. Um, Germany is the only country... Um, uh, is, is, is Germany... Uh, Germany is at one with the US and uh, Europe. Uh, is Germany ready to give up Nord Stream 2? I am 
Uh, I'm, I'm grateful. If you if you don't mind, I will answer first. Um, I will start from the end. All the eyes cannot be dotted yet, unfortunately, because unfortunately, not everything is up to Ukraine. Ukraine's ambition uh, as to the European Union, as to strengthening its border, as its future alliances and our ambitions, uh, you know very well that this is our wish. But apart from the fact that this is our wish and there is a war in the East, we understand that membership of NATO um, is a condition of our security, and this is enshrined in Ukraine's legislation and constitution. But if we were to dot all the I's, we know what the answers would be, and the, and the periods would be very short as to um, uh, Ukraine's future. But as regards our ambassador's statement, as you correctly said, the foreign ministry of Ukraine, led by Minister Kuleba, was official and it was correct and, and substantive. Whether we all understood him correctly, uh, the ambassador, or whether we were wrong, uh, well, what he said, you need to pay attention to certain detail. And I think many journalists today and many leaders indeed somewhat somewhat are hinting at ukraine that well maybe um the, it's not worth the risk maybe you shouldn't raise your future nato membership all the time because these risks um this is a risk of attracting reaction from russia nobody is hiding this but i think we need to be frank Anyhow, it is up to us. Uh, the question is, what is the path? How long is this path? How long will it take Ukraine? Uh, who will be the friends and partners supporting our state on this path? Is the open door policy uh, a bit of a dream for us? Um, maybe we will just keep walking along this path and we'll never reach the end. Nobody knows, not even certain NATO members. I think we should move along this path that we chose. The main thing is to have a powerful army. Where this path will lead, we shall see. We have, um, uh, had, uh, um, this is a very serious um, challenge that we have to deal with, and that's a very threatening situation at the Ukrainian border. There are, are a lot of uh, Russian soldiers with a lot of military equipment. We can, we can see that. Uh, we can also see that with the, um, um, in the Belarus, with the, um, um, and so there is a central uh, challenge that uh, consists of um, uh, uh, to de-escalate de the situation so that the troops are getting uh, withdrawn from the Belarus, that they finish this military exercise. Um, that, that there is uh, uh, that the same applies to the um, uh, border of the Ukraine with Russia, and uh, this is why this is the main um, task that we have to deal with right now. Uh, the question of uh, member ships and um, alliances um, uh, actually doesn't we didn't really have uh, didn't even tackle this really um, uh, to uh, uh, to see that um, the, 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 the huge political issue is, is being made out of this. So this is what we are facing at the moment, and that doesn't work. So we couldn't, that has not become a, a topic. The, um, the fundamental principle, principles of Helsinki um, and the um, um, election principles, that's not even uh, on the agenda at the moment. There is no interest. Um, um, uh, this is not something that the other countries in Europe can decide side about, but even, even so, we have to look at the reality that is a, a conflict that we want to de-escalate, and this is the 
uh, task of this hour of our time. Um, the the Minsk format um, is is that uh, this is why we are continuing the conversations, the dialogues with Russia. Uh, the NATO Russia, uh, Russia uh, uh, Council is also uh, dealing with this, and this this is the task that we need to deal with right now. Uh, uh, Mr. President and uh, Chancellor Scholz uh, said that uh, uh, we know what to do if there uh, should be a violation of the territorial um, integrity of the Ukraine. Uh, uh, it has not been said what exactly would uh, be done. Um, are you uh, happy with this um, uh, strategic ambiguity of the, of the Chancellor or do you think it should be uh, spelled out what kind of sanctions would be introduced and what uh, um, and what they would actually contain uh, the chancellor uh, the, uh, the um, pres president um, mentioned the nato membership and you just said that these are not really on the agenda at the moment is this something that you think that um, um, president putin uh, can be convinced of this is this a message that you're taking to moscow that uh, uh, it is um, uh, acknowledged that the nato membership is not uh, um, on the agenda for now thank you i want to say first of all as to nato membership we have discussed it with uh, uh, mr Sh chancellor schultz and we quoted uh, our ambassador today um, no there is no signal from us that nato membership is not our goal this is not the first time uh, that it is being raised um, that this is not an important issue uh, and this is not from our side this is not um, something we say as for sanctions i believe this is uh, not only something we discussed with um, Chancellor Schultz. I do not have the answer as to what exactly sanctions will be used in the event of escalation from the Russian Federation. But I will also say that it wasn't just the Chancellor who told me this. I uh, will leave this answer. I, I have put this question to many leaders in this at this in these very dangerous last few months and i personally have not heard a specific reply uh, so unfortunately i cannot answer that it is uh, so that we are working very intensely uh, to uh, prepare a packet of sanctions that can be implemented um, it is going it is being uh, discussed in detail with with our um, um, uh, partners uh, with the um, American president and his advisors and the European Union and we are uh, any time um, in a position to actually uh, take the necessary Necessary decision, I think that uh, has been uh, talked about. So myself and many others uh, in the conversations that we have um, uh, conducted, uh, we always mentioned this vis-a-vis -vis Russia that this is going to happen, and uh, nobody. Um, should doubt the, how prepared uh, the EU um, and uh, NATO or, or Germany or the US is to um, actually um, uh, do what needs to be done if there is a military action and uh, that are very far-reaching measures uh, that will have a very serious impact on uh, the economic um, uh, reality of Russia. But for now, uh, uh, the task is to uh, um, uh, prevent this uh, we have to de-escalate the situation and this is uh, why our conversation today was so important we really went into uh, the details uh, so when i say that the necessary um, um, legal um, drafts have been um, are, are being uh, set out uh, for the minsk process that is a very good um, uh, step ahead and um, uh, it means that we would uh, once we have uh, gotten out of this situation, then um, I, they know that I'm very grateful uh, for their role in this and um, uh, we are preparing this and then we'll take the necessary decisions. Mr. President, the 
embassies of several countries have said they will be with moving their offices to western cities in Ukraine. Also, there were the reports yesterday that uh, uh, there have been statements by politicians and opposition members who were either leaving or um, moving their families. Where is your family today? And what is your attitude to these movements by diplomats? Thank you. I will start with the pleasant part. My family is always with me, always with Ukraine. And I'm not being um, uh, self-important. My wife is the first lady and she needs to lead by example. I need to, well, this is not compulsory and we will talk about others as well, but I think it's a matter of principle. It is very important for the state and society to support Ukraine. Um, it, a citizen is not somebody who has a Ukrainian passport, but somebody who is in Ukraine. We are living in a great time. As for the politicians and diplomats, businessmen that you mentioned, you said there were 30 charter flights um, reported yesterday. Uh, well, we have a rich country. Mr. Schultz says then we need to invest in Ukraine. Well, you see, yesterday, 30 charter flights left. I think a lot is invested. Unfortunately, the main thing is for these flights not to take anything out of Ukraine. I think those who are staying are reliable, true citizens of Ukraine, and I want to thank them. I want to thank the diplomats. It is an important time, again, on this path, and not only to the European um, Union or NATO. This is a path to the future. It is important to remain with you, and it is a big mistake on certain embassies apart to be moving to Western Ukraine. There is no Western Ukraine. There is one Ukraine. And if anything happens, all of Ukraine is going to be affected. You can't say if there's escalation, um, you're five or six hours away from it. No, we are all one country. I don't think the people of Lviv will um, uh, be pleased with this uh, because it looks very strange, but that is their choice. I would focus on our leadership of our country, uh, those who are currently abroad, um, certain members of certain parties, and I don't want to name names, but you will know who they are. I think this is a serious challenge. We should signal to them from the parliament, from the speaker, of, of, on behalf of the state. And I personally would like to ask uh, that within 24 hours they would return to the country uh, once they've moved their families. Uh, this is a moment of unity for our state and I think they should return, they must return. Otherwise, we all, as a state, we all should draw serious conclusions and we will. And the same applies to the media. You can't say you're patriots and then move your offices to Lviv or Warsaw or the Czech Republic or the United States because you've been ordered to do so. I think this is unfair and dishonest. Uh, then you're not patriots. You're patriots of a different state. And therefore, there is a big problem with these oligarchs you mentioned. Uh, we, the state, cannot influence business and we're not going to try. I think they made their choice, and but I think they must return to their companies, to the tens of thousands of people working for them and for the country, but also for them. They chose this. They, these are not just reg, uh, ordinary people. These are uh, people of serious industries. They all were involved in the privatization and this country gave them something. I think they gave them a great chance. These are not just IT people. Uh, so that's my attitude. 
Those who go, we don't need them. Um, the citizens of Ukraine will remain. Uh, now we have a moment for a last question. Uh, Mr. Zelensky, um, I'm uh, joining this question that the uh, Foreign Office of, the, of Germany uh, has asked or urged that German citizens should leave the Ukraine and also uh, moved its uh, consulate to the west of the Ukraine. Does it mean that um, Germany is kind of stabbing the Ukraine in the back with this, or is this, um, uh, is this appropriate uh, 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 considering the threat in the current situation? And for Mr. Scholz, uh, the Ukraine uh, emphasizes several times that uh, they're hoping for uh, weapon deliveries from Germany, but um, uh, Germany does not sell any weapons to uh, crisis um, areas. How does Germany uh, support uh, the Ukraine with uh, military um, items. Thank you. At this time, indeed, there are many questions that we have differences on with various countries, but I am a very open person. If the German ministry moved somebody, I don't know, I've not heard of this, because I, right now I can see the German ambassador here, and I think she is here not only because uh, the chancellor is here, we meet very often with her, and so I have no doubt, um, but I have no questions, this is your right. I have no questions to the German embassy. Thank you for their support. Um, um, I would like to um, um, uh, appreciate what the um, uh, Ukrainian, uh, the German ambassador did for uh, this situation, and it's not so that the. Uh, do you know very well the German legislation and that we are not exporting um, uh, weapons into crisis areas, but we are uh, providing other supporters. Uh, we are the biggest financial supporter of the Ukraine, and this is this is how it's going to remain. Uh, with um, regard to questions of individual possibilities, that we are examining these questions again uh, continuously, and this is how it's going to be in the future. And if this examination has concluded, then we will be able to say something more to this. Thank you so much. That was uh, Germany's Chancellor Olaf Scholz there and Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky uh, speaking after their, well, nearly two good hours of talks, according to Olaf uh, Scholz. They had uh, Volodymyr Zelensky saying the security of Ukraine is the security of Europe. Germany, one of our key partners uh, in Europe. Uh, Chancellor Scholz, for, for his part, said that Germany stands with Ukraine. Uh, it's important we continue to pursue a diplomatic solution to this crisis. Uh, there's no reasonable justification for Russia's military activity on Ukraine's border. Let's go live now to Kiev. Al Jazeera's Natasha Butler was listening to all of that. What did you make of what you heard, Natasha? Well, there was a lot there. I mean, it was certainly a show of unity from the German Chancellor to the uh, President of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky. Both spoke about the importance of uh, supporting Ukraine's territorial uh, sovereignty. The German Chancellor also said that he would be bringing a warning to Russia when he visits Moscow uh, on Tuesday and meets Vladimir Putin. He would be telling Vladimir Putin that any invasion or attack on Ukraine would uh, be met with very severe consequences that all Western powers were agreed on that. Uh, they also talked, the two leaders also talked about a number of other issues, among them the Normandy format uh, talks, this process that is ongoing between, at this uh, point in time, senior political advisors from Ukraine, Russia, France and Germany to try and revive the peace process for the east of the country. Uh, both uh, Scholz and Zelensky said they were uh, committed to that. Uh, Scholz also announced that there 
would be more German investment for Ukraine to help its ailing economy. But one of the most interesting points, really, uh, in that press conference was um, when uh, Vladimir Zelensky was asked about some of the comments that had been made by Ukraine's ambassador to uh, London a little bit earlier today uh, about whether or not Ukraine would consider no longer wanting to be a part of NATO, whether it would consider pulling back from that as a concession to try and minimize and diffuse tensions. Well, Zelensky didn't say no. He said that Ukraine was on the path, he meant on the path to uh, NATO membership. That is what people in Ukraine want. It is part of the Constitution. Uh, but he didn't okay. say that it necessarily had to be now and seemed All to right. hint that it could be in the Natasha, future. Natasha Butler live in Kiev. We'll have much more analysis of, uh, of the West's latest diplomatic push to avert a Russian invasion of Ukraine in the news hour with Kamal in a little over 25 minutes.